Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Hope you well, hope you enjoyed your day and you've had a good one. Whatever it is that you're up to, I hope you had the most, had the most of it. Um, yeah, long day in terms of videos today. There was, this is the fourth today, so if you've missed any, go back, have a little look, have a little watch. There's plenty to digest, plenty to get on board with. You know, loan roundup, chances in, chances out, you name it, it's all there. Go have a little watch. This video is a midfielder-based video. We're talking Giovanni Lo Celso and Spurs maybe being a little bit more open to moving him on, as well as Conor Gallagher wanting a Chelsea stay, but he may not have an option. I'll talk to you about it. It's a little bit more detail, a little bit, you know, quite a bit to get into. Just like if you're new, do subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. I'll be very much appreciated as well. And we're going to jump in. I'm going to start with the Giovanni Celso uh, report. And it came from Graham Bailey in the 90-minute football, who said that Tottenham considering Giovanni Lo Celso's future amid Barcelona interest. <clears throat> now, put my hand up. I'm a Giovanni Lo Celso fan. Yeah, he's been good in the last few games, but we're talking only a few games. We're talking a big sample size. Um you know, everyone knows that come January time when we lose two of our midfield that three that that started literally on Sunday in Basuma and Saar, we know that we're very we're down to very limited options, very worryingly limited options. And the Celso is one of those options, isn't it? He's not worried for me. I I think he's fine, but he's not worried for me. When we look at Bentacor being injured, you know, he's not back until spring. Madison's still gonna be injured, you know, he he he's been injured what I don't know how long now, actually, but he's you know he'd probably be back inside of January, maybe even to February, right? So the Celso's gonna be valuable, right? Okay, so if that's the case, you're moving him on. You're gonna have to replace him. I think that's fair. And also, I think Spurs are gonna want to fee up front. They're not gonna go here's a loan deal and then give us an option in the summer. No, it'll be I want twenty million. And that's the way they should look at it. By the way, I know a few of you have been a bit worried about me thinking Spurs will take 15 million for the So I think they might. I hope they wouldn't, though. I'd want it to be 20 million, if not more. But I don't think you're going to get more for Giovanni Just, I just don't think you are. We've seen too many reports of it being somewhere between 15 and 20. And I think we should aim for 20. Because you're going to have to replace him. And you, to replace Gio with genuine quality, it's not going to cost you 10 million. It's going to cost you a lot more. <clears throat> but we shouldn't do Barcelona a favour. We shouldn't be aiding them with the fact that they are foolish when it comes to their own spending. If they want the Celso, you stump up the cash, you can have him. Because we want it, because we're going to need to replace him. So that's the way it should be. Now, who that player might be, you know, obviously I've talked about Conor Gallagher, yeah. Kenneth Taylor from Ajax, it could be a Kenneth Taylor. It could be many options that we don't even know about yet. And I think we may see more and more midfielder options coming out because all we've really seen is centre-back and attackers. We've never really seen enough midfielders and I think that's a real key area that Spurs need to invest in. You know, when you look at the fact that Bentacor's injured, Madison's injured, Saar and Basuma are gone, right? In terms of Af African Cup of Nations. Well, if you're down four, right? You've got Skip, Hoiberg, Lo Celso, maybe a youth player. You tell me that's enough? Madison maybe towards the back end of that month. You tell me that's enough? Kudasevsky, you tell me that's enough? Attacking wise, yeah, you've got, you know, you've got Lacelso, you've got Kudasevsky, Madison, fine. I've seen Skip and Hoiberg as a midfield tandem. I'm not very impressed by it. That's why we need to get some reinvestment into the squad. So let's talk about what Gallagher's situation might be. So First and foremost, again, Graham Bailey said that Conor Gallagher wants Chelsea stay amid in increasingly uncertain future. Now, this is about a player signing a contract, right? This is what it's all about. You've got 18 months left in his deal and, he, you know, he's not signing the contract. So the Mail Sport, you know, through a few different avenues said that Chelsea are prepared to consider offers for Conor Gallagher when the next transfer window opens next month to raise funds from Rich Pochettino, who can make a move for Ivan Tony or Victor Osimhen. <clears throat> the key part in this, I'm going to tie it in because the Guardian also said that Chelsea are likely to target a high-profile striker in January with Ivan Tony, Victor Osimhen, and Victor Giorgeres, the Coventry player from last year, 
bit of a weird one, but he's killing it at Sporting Lisbon. Uh, all on the shortlist, but they'll have to sell players first because of financial fair play concerns. And when you look at the players that maybe they might move on, you might move a Cucurella on, but you're not making back loads of money on him. They talked about De Sassi they might move on. Again, a lot of these players have had their values just plummet because they're not playing well. I'm trying to think of any other players that could sell that make them any real money. That Because you're talking Osserman's going to cost 100, 150 million. You know, Ivan Turner's going to cost you up to about 80 to 90 million. Victor, I don't know about his value, but he's not going to cost you 10, 20 million, is he? So you're going to have to sell players on. And you look at the rest of the, the Chelsea squad, well, the players that they signed for big, big bucks, you know, your 100 millions or so on, they're not moving them on. And they've also got crazy contracts. So they're not going anywhere anytime soon which I'm going to talk about the uh, the ruling of the contracts in a minute. So Gallagher will probably be the one that they will sell. Now, yes, he may want to stay at Chelsea, but other players have wanted to stay at clubs before. And when the club has got a deal that's too good to, to basically turn down, they kind of try and push you towards the door. I, I Yeah, if I'm Conor Gallagher, I'd be wary that, you know, if you're not signing that contract, they're going to move you on, right? So let's talk about this vote really quickly and how it all plays a part into that financial fair play decision. It came from David Ornstein and said that Premier League clubs have voted in favour of limiting amortisation of new contracts a maximum of five years. Deals can still be longer, but amortisation can't. Previously, no cap, but Premier League now in line with the UEFA rules. He, he does go on to say that um, of all the teams that voted, 15 voted in favour, including Chelsea. Uh, two against and three abstentions, uh, abstentions, abs, abstentions, God, abstentions, God, I nearly mullered that word, sorry, sorry. Uh, contracts can still be any length but period over which a player's transfer fee can be spread out in club accounts, limited to a maximum of five years in line with UEFA. Uh, basically, teams like Chelsea have done it over like eight or nine years to make financial fair play work. Chelsea can't spend a billion pounds and be okay with financial fair play. That's the way it's kind of, kind of worked, right? So in that case, if you're wanting an Ivan Tony, if you're wanting a Victor Osman, if you're wanting a good quality striker who's going to cost you more than 10, 15 million pounds, then you're going to have to sell players in Chelsea's situation. And that would be maybe players that don't want to leave. And Conor Gallagher might be a name on that list that they go, actually, you have value. We can move you on quite quickly. You have markets, you have a market to sell into. Connor, you're going to have to go because we need to bring a striker in. And unfortunately, you're, you're, you're the guy that's going to have to take the downfall of this. And look, it, it's a shame for him if he wanted to stay at Chelsea. But he'd then go to a club that really wants him. And I think he'd develop so much more at a club where it's a lot less toxic. He can go to a club where the style of play is attacking front foot, high press that suits him. I think you can even get a half decent deal out of it. You know, 40 million, I think now, 40, 45, maybe for Conor Gallagher, because they're going to need the money ASAP to get the striker in. The more I think of it, the more I'm coming around to it. I do think Gallagher will be a really good signing. I didn't think as much in the summer, but watching him this year, where he's been such a key player for Chelsea, and him and Palmer might have been the only two real good players this year. You have to think about it and think, imagine if he was in a more of attacking team, a more balanced team, a more structured team. I think he'd do even better. And I do genuinely think uh, with Ange and with a midfield that, you know, you can have him with Saar. You know, and I talked about this with in the comments. I'd have classed Bentancourt as a six, potentially. Maybe in the Saar as a six. You'd count, let's say, Madison and Kulisesko, Madison and Celso as your number eight, the attacking eight slash ten. Basuma, Bentancourt, Saar and Gallagher. That's a really solid four. That's a really solid six or seven for the midfield. You throw in a, a youth player here and there to let them develop as well. Next thing you know, your midfield's pretty much sorted. <laughs> Get a couple of centre-halves, one or two midfield. Literally, it's all it is is one or two midfielders, a couple of centre-halves. I'd say another full-back each or moving, moving a full-back on as well, of each is, you know, on top of that. Moving on a couple of midfielders, moving on some defenders, moving on some attackers, bringing some attackers in. You still probably need about 10 to 12 players. But if you get two or three in January, let's say you get, let's say you get three in January and you get five in the summer. You get a couple, 
in that next following January, you start to go, hang on, that squad's looking pretty decent now. The squad's looking like an Ange squad. Not a Pochettino, Mourinho, Nuno, Ryan Mason, Conte squad. This is now an Ange squad. Ooh, I'm threatening myself with a good time there. But anyway, guys, at the end of the video, I hope you did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me your, in the comment section your thoughts and feelings. Around this is also interest that Spurs may be open to selling. Also, the Conor Gallagher situation that Chelsea might have to sell. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, at the end of the video, I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.